Welcome to this Learn the Netflix video about protective and switching devices. When selecting accessories for function or protection, it is important to choose the correct device and so having a basic understanding of how each device functions is essential. In this video, we will consider three often asked questions. What are switching devices? What are protection devices? And what kinds of protection are there? Which device to choose? And more importantly, which devices not to choose? Let's start with fuses. We begin with cartridge fuses. They are still very common and they are used throughout the electrical industry. The symbol that most of us use is shown at the top right, an oblong with a line through it to represent the fuse wire. They rely on a piece of metal, the fuse wire, to melt when excessive current flows through the fuse and you can see this wire in the middle photo on the left. When the wire melts, or blows as we say, this creates a gap between the two ends of the fuse and interrupts the flow of current. Once blown, the fuse must be replaced. They are a simple one-shot device. They come in different fusing types. Some respond quickly to overcurrent, others respond a little slower. And this is achieved by mixing together different metals to make up the piece of fuse wire. There is a whole range of fusing sizes and many different physical sizes. There are push-in fuses, screw-in fuses, lugs with one hole, lugs with two holes, and even offset lugs. When buying fuses, take the old one with you to the wholesalers to make sure you buy the correct one. Fuses can be used for overload and short circuit protection. By removing the fuse, they can also be used for isolation of the circuit. Because it takes time to find a screwdriver or spanner to remove a fuse from the circuit, they cannot be used for emergency switching or everyday on-off switching, what we call functional switching. Lastly, do not confuse the symbol for a fuse with that of a resistor as shown here. They do look a little similar. Next, we will look at switches and as you will see, there are many permutations. A switch is basically just two contacts with the means of connecting the two together or separating them. The symbol that I use is shown here. The contacts will be in the open position or in the closed position. An ordinary household light switch is a good example. With the contacts open, no current flows and the light is out. Close the contacts, allow current to flow through the switch and the lamp will light up. A domestic switched 13 amp socket outlet has the same switching principle. Turn the socket on, turn the socket off. They can be used for simple on and off functions and light switches can be used for simple isolation of a circuit whilst the light bulb is changed. But you should not be relying on these for isolation during electrical work as they cannot be locked off. The BS numbers for some typical switches that we often use are shown. Here we are showing you a linked double pole switch such as those that we will find in a typical consumer unit, the big red switch as many householders call it. It is used for functional switching, in other words turning on or turning off the whole supply. The symbol shown is fairly straightforward. In reality the switch levers are physically joined together so that turning one off turns both off. Two poles, one for phase, one for neutral. For a consumer unit, this big red switch will be a BSEN 60947-3 and the meter tails will be connected into it. It is a switch, so that is all that it does. It is either on or off. There is no protection from overload or short circuit currents, but it can be locked off for safe isolation. The switch will have a certain current rating, typically 100 amps or 80 amps. This is the pass-through current, the maximum current that it can safely handle seven days a week, 24 hours a day. If you put 130 amps through the switch, it will not trip. It will happily sit there and allow this 130 amps to pass through. 
Unfortunately, this may damage the contacts inside the switch as they will only be rated for whatever is on the front, 80 amps or 100 amps or some other number. We should always ensure that the maximum current that might pass through the switch will be less than the amps rating that is printed on the switch. With the linked switch, all linked contacts will open and close together at reasonably the same time. Three phase switches are available and again the contacts are linked so that they all operate together. These would be used for three line conductors of a three phase installation, perhaps to a three phase motor. Three phase plus neutral switches are also common, so now there will be four linked contacts. We do not switch the earth. Let's move on to MCBs now, or miniature circuit breakers to give them their full name. Typical uses of an MCB would be the circuit breakers in a consumer unit. The symbol shown is the one that I use, but there are other symbols in use in the industry. This shows a single pole MCB as is common in many installations in the UK. On some drawings, the symbol might be shown as just the square box with no semicircle. Another set of drawing standards show it with no box, just the semicircle. With practice, it is easy to pick up what is intended from the symbols. The semicircle is to distinguish it from the fuse. And this is what an MCB is when you think about it. It is a resettable fuse. As well as operating as a switch, they will also give short circuit and overload protection. MCBs have replaced cartridge fuses in many installations. They are much faster operating than a cartridge fuse and as well as overcurrent protection, they can be used for functional on-off switching and, importantly, they can be locked off to safely isolate a circuit whilst electrical work is carried out. Common nowadays would be the BSEN 60898 breakers, but there are still plenty of the older BS3871 breakers out there. MCBs are available as three-pole devices too, one set of contacts for each of the three phases. They are linked so that all three will operate at the same time. We never run a three phase machine or motor on just two phases. We can damage things by doing this. So if one phase has a problem and disconnects the supply, all three phases disconnect together. Again, as with the single pole variety, they can be used for overload and short circuit protection for functional switching of on and off and can be locked off for safe isolation. As well as being labelled L1, L2, L3, the three pole MCB can be numbered 1 to 2, 3 to 4 and 5 to 6. This numbering is often shown on the front of the MCB as indicated in red here and is a common way of numbering devices in industrial installations. A third construction of an MCB is the two-pole device. These are obligatory on mainland Europe and also used in caravans in the UK. The neutral must be disconnected at the same time as the phase, so there are connections for the phase and neutral on each MCB as shown in the photos. The standard number for them is still 60898, but now without the BS at the beginning, just EN60898. Otherwise, they have the same protection and switching characteristics as the UK versions. We can move on now to RCDs, or residual current devices, and this is an area that sometimes causes confusion. In this first part, we will look at pure RCDs. Here is an RCD with its basic symbol. An RCD must have, must have, the phase and neutral passing through it. And the two sets of contacts are linked so that they operate at the same time. An RCD works by comparing the ingoing phase amps to the returning neutral amps. In a normal healthy circuit, they will be the same. If they are not the same, where is the missing current? And if this missing current exceeds a certain preset amount, then the RCD will operate and disconnect the supply. 
For domestic applications, this will normally be 30 milliamps or 30 thousandths of an amp, which is well below the limit of survivability of electric shock for a healthy adult. Most importantly, please note that the basic RCD shown here offers no overcurrent protection at all. It will simply watch and wait for a preset difference between the in current and the out current. It offers RCD protection only, but can also be used for safe isolation of the circuits downstream as it can be locked off. On the front of the RCD will be two ratings. Here we have 80 amps and 30 milliamps. The 80 amps number is the pass through current for the RCD. It is not a fusing current. Be very clear on that. The RCD in our example can allow 80 amps to pass through 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, without overheating or becoming damaged, but will not give any overcurrent protection. If 120 amps passes through and comes out again, what will happen? Nothing. If what goes in is the same as what comes out, then the RCD will think the world is a happy place and do nothing. It will allow the 120 amps to continue to flow. But the contacts and internal parts are only rated for 80 amps. They will start to overheat. They may become damaged and possibly become ineffective when needed for their proper job. All basic RCDs should be installed along with the fuse or MCB to give the circuit overcurrent protection because the RCD cannot do that for itself. The 30 milliamps shown on the front tells us that the RCD will operate when the difference between phase and neutral reaches 30 milliamps. Larger tripping currents are available, for example 100 milliamps and 300 milliamps, but these are usually for fire protection, not for preservation of life. Another type of RCD is an RCBO. This is a residual current circuit breaker with integral overload protection and should be treated as a different device to the basic RCD. An RCBO is a combined RCD and MCB. We said just two slides ago that all basic RCDs should be installed along with a fuse or MCB to give the circuit overcurrent protection because the RCD cannot do that for itself. Well, the RCBO gets around this problem. It offers RCD protection and overcurrent protection in the same device. The symbol shows this concept. There is a semicircle for overcurrent protection incorporated into the RCD symbol. An RCBO gives RCD protection, overload protection, short circuit protection and can be used for safe isolation and as a functional on-off switch. An RCBO will replace a standard MCB and will offer individual RCD protection to the circuit that it is connected to. It is normally connected directly between the supply bus bar and the main neutral bar. RCBOs are physically bigger than the standard MCB. On the front of the RCBO will, again, be two current ratings. In this example, 32 amps and 30 milliamps. This RCBO would typically protect a ring final socket circuit, a cooker circuit, or perhaps a shower. They are available in all standard sizes, for example, 6 amps for lighting, 40 amps for larger showers, and so on. If the ingoing phase current was overloaded at, say, 50 amps, and the returning neutral current was also 50 amps, in other words, they are equal, the RCBO will trip unlike a basic RCD. It will also operate within the disconnection times according to the ZS tables for fault currents. For the 30 milliamps that is shown on the front, again, if the current difference is 30 milliamps or more, then the RCBO will trip. This one device gives overload protection, short circuit protection and RCD protection all combined in one package. It can be used as a functional on-off switch and for safe isolation and locking off. And there we have it, a basic introduction to switching and protective devices. 
We hope you found this video from Learn the Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next twice weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. And we also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.